Welcome to Hotline TV, everybody. I'm John Mercurio. And I'm Amy Walter. All right, four more superdelegates endorsed Barack Obama yesterday, leaving him just a baker's dozen behind Clinton. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on uncommitted to jump on the Obama wagon, yet some still linger in superdelegate limbo. Mm. John, what is it going to take to get these guys on board. Interesting. Well, first or of all, break apparently there's a few who will accept cash. Oh. Steve Yabara, um, the superdelegate mm. from California, a, a DNC member and a Hispanic uh, activist, has said that he will take $20 million from one of the candidates mm. uh, devoted to registration drives and get out the vote efforts for Hispanic uh, voters in November. Um, if, if either one of them are willing to fork over that $20 million or commit that $20 million, uh, then he's offering his superdelegate vote. It's ridiculous. It's sort of absurd. But it shows where these... Uh, Yabara is sort of a headline grabber, although a big, big friend of the show. Mm -hmm. And he... But it shows, I think, where these guys are. Yeah. They think that their vote uh, matters so much. And frankly, it does. Uh, $20 million might be a little bit too high of a price tag. Yeah, but pay. don't we think that there are but, deals getting cut that, could, that we know are about, hey, you're a member of Congress, you have a tough re-election coming up, somebody could help you, I don't know, raise a little money from donors, right, maybe clearly, make a couple phone calls for you course, to your absolutely. maxed out folks, right? Absolutely. And these aren't conversations, I mean, you know, these meetings that Clinton and then today Obama are having with the superdelegates, they aren't conversations, you're right, they're so sort of involved in what, the, you know, what promises can be made, they can't be conversations that are had with the candidate, they really have to be more... Uh, I think at the staff level, but you look at the group of them that still hasn't committed and everybody's putting pressure on them, everybody's asking them why they haven't, and you ask yourself sort of what is the role that they think they play right. in this process? Do they think that as a superdelegate they are required to sort of help whoever the nominee, help the party win the White House? Is that their ultimate responsibility? And if so, why haven't they come out? And clearly I think what a lot of them are going to say um, is what Hillary Clinton is saying, not that they support her but her campaign, but that they support the idea that this drawn-out primary is not hurting right. and, the party and as much as everybody thinks. there is nothing to suggest right now, at least from what I've seen, that has made the case that this is hurting the party. Now, it's hurting her in the sense that she doesn't have much money left, mm -hmm. and at some point, this may be a moot point, which is, I think, what a lot of these superdelegates are hoping, is that something happens, Kentucky, West Virginia, maybe she doesn't do as well, she's, got, she's running on fumes in terms of money, and it just sort of bleh, falls away. I, I kind of doubt that happens, but right. that's one of their hopes. But, but ultimately, you know, look, she said this too. You got a lot of women who feel like this may never happen again in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I may never see a woman elected president before I die. Let her play all nine innings. Right. Here's another little scenario that I think a lot of people realize is taking place. You've got a lot of pressure coming out over the past two days since Indiana and North Carolina from the media. Right, from NBC, exactly. from ABC, from CBS, from, from editorials, from editorial boards. Exactly. Well, you know what's going on in those newsrooms, in those bureaus around the country? They're looking at their budgets. They're realizing <laughs> that they've spent twenty-one thousand dollars a day on each of these candidates. Or, I'm sorry, on the on the entire presidential campaign at some of these television networks, and they're realizing um, that some that that, that that those budgets are are not entirely separate from their convention budgets, and they may need to spend a lot of money at this convention. Uh, just a few months away, and if they have no money left from the uh, from the primary campaign, is that somehow well, going to impair their ability to spend that money is, in the convention? Well, that is a good point. Plus, just spending this money on what seems like a never-ending series of and the burnout factor. Sure, there's a right? burnout. And, well, the, and the laws of diminishing return. Do viewers right. actually tune in? Do readers actually care about the story after so many weeks? That's right. Uh, that they're spending money on having to cover it. So, Oof. I think a little bit of a financial pressure being put on uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, from major media organizations. Mm -hmm. It's but always Amy, the media. It's always the media. It's it a conspiracy. Always, always conspiracy. The media. But, Amy, for us. but Amy, I'm not holding my breath waiting on those guys, and that's all I've got for you today. I'm not holding my breath. Oh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. All right, Hotline TV. Go for it.